When you go to a museum, you'll find information to go along with almost every exhibit you see. There'll be a display telling the story of the artifact you're looking at or a voiceover or tour guide giving you all the necessary information. Not every artifact or discovery comes with such an easily understood backstory, though. There are some discoveries that don't appear to make sense, or finds that challenge our understanding of the past. And this video is all about those troubling yet incredible discoveries. The people who lived in England 700 years ago didn't have enough knowledge about geography to create a map of the world, but that didn't stop them from trying. This is the Hereford Mappa Mundi, drawn somewhere toward the end of the 13th century on calfskin. Despite its inaccuracy, it's thought of as one of the most significant maps in world history. Some experts believe that it was never supposed to be an accurate map for navigation purposes at all. They think it's more likely that its unknown creator intended it to be received as a work of art. The city of Jerusalem appears right at the center of the map, as was the tradition in medieval times, but the names of Europe and Africa have been switched for unknown reasons. Towards the edges of the map, we find completely fictional islands and countries, mythical beasts, scenes from the Bible, and multiple references to classical mythology. Academics who've studied the map are amazed at the number of different influences and sources of knowledge that the author appears to have drawn from. It was once brightly colored, but sadly the passing of time has seen the colors fade away. It's taken a very long time for archaeologists to pay proper attention to the Costa tomb in northern Greece. The structure, also known as the Amphipolis tomb, was first noticed inside the Costa Mound in 2012, despite the fact that the mound itself was first discovered in 1964. Even after its long overdue discovery, it still took archaeologists a further two years to open it up and look inside. When they eventually did, they were astonished to discover that they were looking at one of the largest tombs ever to be found in Greece. Such is the scale of the 2,400-year-old tomb that experts briefly thought they might have discovered the tomb of Alexander the Great. They weren't a million miles away with that guess. Based on inscriptions and engraved goods found in and around the burial site, this appears to be the final resting place of Hephaestion, Alexander the Great's lifelong best friend. Scientists are still trying to prove that one of the five sets of human remains discovered at the site belonged to Hephaestion, but that might not get them any closer to finding out who the other four were. How could there possibly be footprints two and a half miles beneath the sea between Hawaii and Mexico? That's the question scientists found themselves asking when evidence of the footprints was first discovered in September 2018. Over two years later, they still don't have any good answers. Many different theories have been proposed about the footprints, ranging from the idea that they're not actually footprints at all to the possibility that they're evidence of extraterrestrial visitation on Earth. A robot sent to the bottom of the ocean by Britain's National Oceanographic Center captured these images of the footprints and baffled its operators in the process. The imprints are over a foot deep and over six feet long, which is far too big and heavy for a fish or undersea creature. There's never been any mining activity in this area, so the possibility that they might have been created by human activity is out of the window too. Over three and a half thousand footprint-like shapes are down there on the ocean floor, arranged in a regular track-like pattern that doesn't appear to be randomly distributed. Do you have any idea what might have made them? We'd love to hear your theories. Buying a gift for a king or queen of England is a difficult task. What do you buy for someone who already has literally everything they could ever want? Maximilian, the emperor of Rome, was faced with that dilemma in 1511 when an occasion called upon him to come up with a gift for the young King Henry VIII of England. Here's the terrifying mask that he eventually settled on, which he personally had commissioned for the king. We think this definitely counts as thinking outside the box. The grotesque mask comes complete with detailed stubble around the chin, a disgusting string of snot dripping from the nose, and a pair of spectacles. 
Historians think that it was likely presented to the king as part of a whole suit of armor, but only the horned helmet has survived the passing of the years. No historical record of Henry wearing anything as outlandish as this into battle exists, so presumably the armor must have had a ceremonial purpose. We can only imagine what kind of ceremony might involve the king wearing something this hideous. Maybe they had a very strange sense of humor in England 500 years ago. While we're on the topic of mysterious masks, this would be a good time to introduce the so-called Mask of La Roche Cotard. The controversy about this historical artifact is that some people don't believe that it's a genuine historical artifact at all. If we take the stories of its supporters at face value, this is a unique example of Neanderthal rock art created inside La Roche Cotard cave on the banks of France's Loire River 33,000 years ago and left there for archaeologists to discover in 1975. Those who believe in the authenticity of the mask say that there's clear evidence that the flint has been shaped and worked upon to resemble a human face, right down to the fact that there are bones jammed into holes in the rock where the eyes ought to be. Those who are less than convinced about the mask theory accept that the placement of the bones was deliberate but reject the idea that Neanderthals would have deliberately attempted to sculpt a replica of a humanoid face. They think that people just see what they want to see when they look at it. The purpose and authorship of the Fool's Cap Map of the World is a mystery that united historians and cartographers. Who created this bizarre 16th century drawing based on the body and costume of a court jester, but with a map of the world as a face? The copper plate engraving was made somewhere between 1580 and 1590, possibly based on a slightly earlier drawing by French cartographer Jean de Formand. The name of mapmaker Orance Fine is inscribed in one of the drawing's corners, but it can't be his work. He died in 1555. As the fool was a subject of ridicule, dressing the whole world up in a fool's outfit could be interpreted as a rejection of the political status quo or even a rejection of the whole world as it existed at the time. That theory is supported by the depressing Latin inscriptions on the foot's medallions, which include, Oh, the world and its worries, and All is vanity. In the last quote, right at the bottom of the copper plate says, The number of fools is infinite. It sounds like the people of the 16th century were just as world-weary as the people of the 21st. There are many wonderful archaeological sites in Turkey, whether you can count Durapinar among those archaeological wonders is a matter of controversy. This enormous rock formation, just a few miles away from the country's border with Iran, is said by some to be the place where Noah's Ark finally came to rest after the biblical flood. According to those who believe the theory, the closest mountain to Durapinar is Mount Judy, the place listed as the boat's final location in the Quran. So the fact that Durapinar looks a lot like an enormous boat can't be a coincidence. To those who reject the theory, a coincidence is exactly what it is. It does admittedly look like a boat, but to skeptics, this is nothing more than a natural rock formation. The boat shape went unnoticed for centuries until 1948, when a combination of earthquakes and heavy rainfall made it visible to the naked eye. You'll find road signs in the surrounding area proclaiming it to be the real Noah's Ark, and many locals in this part of Turkey are convinced of its authenticity. But scientists say that the shape was caused by an upflow of lava after volcanic activity, and there's no evidence of any boat here at all. In 2007, construction workers started digging out a proposed housing development in West Sussex, England. They had to stop almost as soon as they started because their equipment unearthed a mysterious Iron Age warrior who's come to be known as the North Burstead Man. In the 13 years since his discovery, scientists and archaeologists have been slowly piecing together the story of who he was and how he lived and died. The remains of the warrior have been dated to around 50 BCE, which is the time of Julius Caesar's war against the Gaelic tribes of France. Based on his helmet and headdress, along with his bent sword and decidedly French-looking jewelry, Experts believe that he almost certainly fought on the French side of that conflict, 
An elaborate headdress like this one wouldn't have been afforded to any old soldier, so he was likely either a leader or an especially mighty warrior. The question of how he came to be in England is unresolved, but it's possible that he was part of a battalion which retreated across the English Channel when Caesar's victory in France became inevitable. The history of the civilizations and cultures who lived in South America during pre-Columbian times can sometimes be hard to unravel. Take the Raimonde steel, for example. We believe that it was made by the Chavin culture who lived in what's now Peru about 3,500 years ago. And we suspect that it was a sacred object to them. But we can't say that with any great certainty. The steel was found in 1874 and named after Antonio Raimondi, the man who discovered it. The connection with the Chavin comes from the fact that it was found in the ruins of the ancient temple at Chavin de Hotar in the Andes. There's even some controversy about that, though. Some Peruvians insist that Raimondi stole it from the home of a peasant living in Calajan de Conchucos. The steel itself is an incredible artifact standing over six feet tall and made from polished granite. The inscriptions that run across it were deliberately carved lightly, and from some angles it can't be seen at all. They also clash with each other. View the steel from one angle and you see a godlike figure holding two staffs. View it from another angle and you see a representation of a totem pole, with even the staffs in the hands of the deity turned into row upon row of happy smiling faces. Sadly, their meaning is lost to time. If you visited Dunvegan Castle on the Scottish island of Skye and asked the castle's owner very nicely, you might get the opportunity to take a look at the fabled fairy flag of the Scottish clan MacLeod. Legend has it that this artifact has magical protective powers. Even the surviving members of the clan aren't 100% sure where the flag came from. One often told story says that it dates all the way back to the time of the Crusades and came from the Middle East while others insist it was literally created by fairies. There might be a grain of truth to the first story. Analysis of the silk that the flags made from have shown that it came from Syria, but the Syria of 1600 years ago. That's far too early for the First Crusade, although we suppose it could have still been in use at the time. The protection myth states that if the Clan MacLeod were ever to be in mortal danger, all they need to do is unfurl the flag and wave it in the air three times, which would attract the attention of legions of fairies who would then come to their aid. This power is like a genie's lamp, only available three times, after which the ability is lost. As MacLeod history claims, it's been used twice already, and now it's being saved for a time of dire emergency. Right at the start of this video, we said that it's a lot easier to understand historical artifacts if there's an inscription or description available to explain them to us. The astronaut of Caesar in cancerous Spain does come with an inscription, so we should have no problem making sense of it. But there's a problem. Nobody's ever been able to translate the inscription, and so the purpose or meaning of the steel remains unknown. The humanoid figure depicted on the stone, with its oversized head and shoulders, might be a depiction of a Celtiberian warrior from around 2100 years ago. But that's little more than a best guess on the part of historians. The astronaut of Kaiser nickname is a more recent affectation, based on the fact that the figure supposedly looks like a human being in a spacesuit. While the figure is mysterious, the text is the true enigma. The characters are Latin, but the words seem closer to an ancient Indo-European language that was once used in Spain. They don't form coherent phrases when translated into either Latin or any type of Indo-European. Might they have been written in code? For many years, the mummified remains of Gabelian Man in the early Egypt gallery of the British Museum was known by historians and archaeologists as one of the world's best-preserved, non-deliberate mummies. He was buried in a shallow grave in Gebelion, just south of Thebes, around 5,500 years ago, and wrapped in matting and linen, with no effort made to preserve his remains. Nevertheless, the hot sand and sun preserved him anyway, much to the shock of the archaeologists who discovered him in 1896. His cause of death was unknown from then until 2013, when 3D imaging proved beyond all reasonable doubt 
that this unfortunate man was fatally stabbed in the back. The same scans also proved that he was young, probably no more than 20 years old when his life came to an end. Eager to find out more, the scientists at the museum subjected the mummy to infrared testing in 2018 and made another shocking discovery. Back when he was alive, his skin was covered in animal tattoos, making his the oldest figural tattoos ever discovered in the world. It might now be worth going back over the other mummies in the museum's collection with an infrared scanner to find out if they had ink of their own. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.